Got my diagnostics reader here. Very simple diagnostics reader. Put the key in here. P1077. Faulty intake manifold runner control valve. <laughs> All right, welcome back party people. Today we're working on this Acura RSX again. It's a 2002 model. It has the two liter dual overhead cam, four cylinder in it, and it is the iVTEC technology as well, but we're not gonna be working on the exhaust side whatsoever, hopefully. A little backstory on this. This car was in for a knock sensor replacement the last time I worked on it, and uh, that was a fairly straightforward process. Go to your local auto parts store, Get a knock sensor they're very common for these uh for acura and honda and they all use the same knock sensor had to remove the intake to actually access the knock sensor because i couldn't do the underneath method some people are able to do it but with the extensions i couldn't get to it to to uh to take the sensor off so I, we had to take the intake off and that requires a little bit of uh, other things in here that have to come off as well we got the intake off, replaced the knock sensor, the code went away. So this car has a variable intake runner length so the air passageway can change. So there's a solenoid that controls the vacuum. That vacuum controls the intake runner and it flips. So I don't know if I pinched a vacuum hose or maybe the position sensor is bad, but I did, I did test out the position sensor. It seems like it knows where it's at. Maybe one of the hoses has a hole in it, maybe the uh, solenoid that controls that is um, is faulty or maybe we have some problem with the intake runner being gunked up because i read online a uh, google search of most common problems is sometimes the intake runner gets gunked up inside and uh, when it does it can't move it binds up or it can be cracked as well so we've got to take this thing back apart so we've got to get access to this intake First, let's go plug in, read the diagnostics, and I'll show you the code. Got my diagnostics reader here. Very simple diagnostics reader. I don't have you know, anything super technical here. It's good enough to read codes and clear codes. It has no information about any manufacturer specific codes or anything in it, but I think this is a fairly common code. So uh, this should do the trick. So let's go plug it in. Put the key in here. Some of these masks hanging out of the way. And your diagnostic port is located right here, right by the center console. All right, so we're plugged in. P1077. All right. All right, I'm just going to see what uh, P1077 means here. Da 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 da. Faulty intake manifold runner control valve. Valve harness is open or shorted. Valve circuit poor electrical connection. Engine power is achieved by closing and opening the intake manifold runner control valve. When the valve is closed, there's high torque at low engine speed. When the valve is open, there is high torque at high engine speed. So uh, let's get some of these pieces off so we can get access to it. Most of this work can be done with a 10, mil 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter and uh, a few different extensions so we're going to start by removing this plastic cover here there are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on this plastic here and we're just going to pop that off and you can see that we have access to the top of the intake now so here's the solenoid and you can see that it has a vacuum hose connected to the control valve here and that has a bladder in it vacuum is pulled on that the actual intake runner turns the position of the intake runner is fed back through the system with the intake runner position sensor which is mounted on the side of this intake runner which you can't see right now because it's inside the intake so we're going to just make sure double check that we have all of our electrical plugged in that uh that we have all of the hoses plugged in and uh, if not we're going to start troubleshooting probably from that control valve there see if we've got any vacuum getting pulled on this and uh, go from there i'm going to pull this vacuum hose here and uh, i'm going to start the car up and go to about 3000 rpms and when the uh, radiator fan comes on we should see some vacuum being pulled there yeah as i imagine it's a little bit stiff there we go. I just uh, have this handheld vacuum gauge here. I'm gonna put a 
that might fit around this nipple. I might have to reduce it a little bit. Pull the collar forward for vacuum. We're just going to measure. All right, let me go start the car and uh, see if we can find something to put on the gas pedal. So I was measuring vacuum with this little handheld vacuum measurer and uh, so I tested the, the, the hose between the solenoid and the valve and uh, so we revved the car up to 3000 We waited till the uh, fan came on. No vacuum whatsoever and uh, the next step is to test the bottom hose here which connects to the runner valve and uh, actually when I went to go remove the bracket here this uh, hose here was completely disconnected so this disconnects somewhere down there on the intake so that's probably part of the problem if not all of the problem so I've got the hose here on the end of my vacuum pump and I was just doing some tests with it off just covering it up with my finger here and just putting a, uh, a vacuum on it and just see if it would actually hold there so there's nothing wrong with the hose between the solenoid and the uh, control valve so that's telling me that the solenoid e is either not clicking on or we're losing vacuum down that other hose which is probably a big part of what our problem here I think this hose does not have a leak in it it seems to hold vacuum okay so we'll let it go I'll test the other hose too but I think in order to get to that hose we're gonna have to take the intake off by the way the troubleshooting and service manuals for these cars, they're all online and free. The, the models are so old, 2002 to 2006, Acura RSX. You can find these online totally free. So don't guess at it. Go by the service manual on and, and take the necessary steps here. So we know that um, either our solenoid wasn't kicking on or our solenoid was kicking on. And uh, it had just had a vacuum leak down there. So we've got to get that other hose back on and uh, figure out how to do that all right so i'm just going to plug the other port of this uh, solenoid valve up and then test the hose down here on the bottom just to make sure the hose is good before we replace it so i'm going to put a uh, put a vacuum on it there and i just got my finger over the bottom port there see if it holds doesn't seem like there's a leak you can see the vacuum holding at about a half half a bar and I'll let it go. So I think our vacuum hose is good. I think it was just off the uh, the inlet down there. So we got to figure out how to get to that and whether we can get to it without taking the intake off or not. So that's our next steps. This bottom hose from the control valve is actually teed into another hose down there. I can't reach it without taking the uh, intake off. So I'm gonna have to take the intake off. So let's go ahead and pop these pins, remove this plastic piece, remove, uh, couple of the bolts on top for the uh, core radiator support and we'll also remove the air cleaner as well screws it's just easier to deal with this uh, air intake on the throttle body body here with these screws out and the top off get up under those pins flathead or pick and then pop them straight up so it can be a pain in the butt and I try to do it with plastic if I can there we go We want to kind of leave that loose because we're going to take we're going to need to get to these core radiator bolts that are behind the core support bolts that are kind of behind that we don't really need to take it off per se and have enough room 
view of the other radiator bolts right here. There's one there. Let's see if you can see that. So there's one there. And there's one on the other side, same place. You don't have to take this plastic piece all the way off. Closer view. This clip here that holds the air conditioner line on, get that off of the uh, core support. That gives you a little bit of freedom to wiggle that around. Now, yeah, this core support should be, we should be able to bump it. Yeah, there we go. So just kind of bump it back like that. See how it's wiggling there? That's all you need. So we'll continue to remove our uh, air filter cover there. All right, we're gonna take the boot off here. Unplug our sensor here. And pull that out. Get it out of the way. So we're going to end up taking the throttle body off of the intake. It's just easier to get the intake out once you do that. So we're going to remove the bolts holding down the the intake here. And uh, there's a couple of sensors here that we're going to have to disconnect. There's a blue one here on top. And a black one. They're all part of the same uh, wiring harness there, so it should be pretty easy. And there's another blue one a little bit further lower. And that's all that should be holding that on. And the reason why I'm taking the throttle body off is because I don't want to really mess with the water hoses, the coolant hoses um, that are attached to the throttle body. So right now you can see what's holding on the throttle body. So we have four bolts holding the throttle body, two on the bottom, two on the top, one there, one there, one in all the corners there. So those are 12 millimeter. Get you an extension. I'll have all the torque specs here. I'm just going to diagonally loosen this because I am following the service manual as well. Easy for these to fall. So I like to uh, get my magnet ready and just stick on top of the bolt there as long as it's metal you'll be fine there's your throttle body bolt that's what they all look like just four of those here's number two there's number three I'm gonna actually clean this intake runner out probably since I'll have it off. Yep. Alright, so there's bolt number four. Now our throttle body is loose. We just wanna kind of just sit it out of the way a little bit. Just so we can try the uh and you're probably gonna have to remove some of these tubing clips to get everything out. So we have nut, nut, bolt, bolt, bolt. So there's five bolts. There's nothing holding it on from the bottom side. So that's the good thing. So we're just gonna remove these. Those are 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter as well. Loosen it up. And we'll go over it, loosen it nut up. Zigzag across to the outside here. This one's a little bit harder to get to because the control valve there is in your way, so you're gonna need a swivel for that one. Let's try this. Yep. There we go. So there's one intake bolt. There's one nut. Two nuts. Anything two bolts. Uh, 
All right, last bolt. We've got our core radiator support kind of out of the way here. Got this unclipped. Just make sure everything is kind of out of the way. And then it just pulls right off. All right, I'm just gonna remove these breather hoses and uh, that should get us uh, a little bit more wiggle room here. Okay, there's a clamp. I guess we're gonna need a big one for this one. Sensor here. We got one sensor. All right. So there's our intake. So there's the other vacuum hose where the other vacuum hose would have connected right here, and that was just laying off. So I don't know if that's something that I did when I took it off. I'm not sure. So. Uh, we're going to take this intake runner off since we got it out and uh, clean it up a little bit. All right, so this is our intake and uh, we've got position sensor here. So that's the intake runner position sensor and this is what this is the, the bladder. So the solenoid sits, it opens, pulls vacuum. This in turn turns the runner and I'll take out the runner and show that to you. And uh, the position sensor feeds back the position of the runner back to the ECM and the solenoid control is through the ECM as well. So let's take out these bolts here and see if we can pull out that runner. Windy out there today. Alright, so there's three. There's our intake runner. Actually, doesn't look too bad. It's not, uh, the inside is not uh, too awfully bad in there. It's not gunked up. I don't see any cracks. The gasket looks okay. Yeah, it looks fairly good, but we're gonna clean this up. A little bit of brake cleaner. Let's just. want to make sure that there's no cracks in this runner here that all of these little plastic pieces look good all right so let's just clean the inside of this thing out Be real careful here I got a little vacuum on the, uh, Make sure this hose is on there. This remember this is the hose that uh, came loose before, so I'm gonna put it on and put it in this little clip right here on the side. So hopefully we don't have a problem with that one again. 
and I should be able to get to the rest of it from the top. Do we have a good seal all the way around? I think so. All right, let's go put it back on, see what happens. All right, so I just leisurely set the intake in and connected a couple of those hoses. Before I bolt anything down, I'll make sure that we have all of our vacuum hoses in the right place. Sensors are in the right place and connected. Let's try to put this solenoid valve back on. Get the two the hose up in there. That should hopefully be able to get it right in there. I'm just gonna plug in a couple of these sensors before I forget. So this is our position sensor. Come to light. Okay, that snapped in place. Put this back where it belongs. Snap it in place. All right. Put our hose clamps back on over here. Always hate when somebody spins them around down toward the bottom and you can't get to it. All right, so I just uh, hooked up our vacuum hose from the solenoid to the uh, control valve and then hooked up the position sensor and the uh, solenoid. And now I'm just positioning the throttle body and hooking up the sensors, hooked up the vent hoses for the intake. And uh, we're gonna bolt the throttle body on. All right, so we got the uh, intake bolts tightened down. Now I'm just putting the throttle body. Throttle body bolts in. Getting that tightened down, make sure all the Hoses are hooked up and all the sensors are hooked up before we even try to start with the car. Because of the radiator hose in a cross pattern. We need to put our breather back on, hook up our vents. And there's a couple more sensors there to hook up. Like that. All right. Yeah. What's up, babe? She had eye surgery for macular pucker yesterday, so she's in pain. I'll give her some, uh, give her some love. I, uh... All right. So we got our vent hose on. We need to clamp it. All right, let's tighten down the, make sure I don't get any sensors there. They're all connected. And that bundle goes right in that little clip there. All right, so I think we got everything positioned, connected, pieced back together. We tightened our throttle, bottle, throttle body bolts. We got all of our sensors plugged in, it looks like. Tighten down our air filter cover. We got our vent hoses connected. We got all our hoses snapped back into the right place. We've got our position sensor plugged in. We've got a control valve plugged in. We've got all the vacuum hoses connected that weren't connected before. We have our intake manifold bolts torqued down. So I think we have everything to give it a start and see what happens. Codes, put the engine off. Some no mill light. Let's see if we can get a read on here. Alright, so codes, enter, no codes. No check engine light. All right, we're going to leave that plugged in and uh, we're going to do a little test drive around the block just to make sure it doesn't come back. But it's cleared out for now. So let me go tighten down the other two uh, core radiator support bolts and put the plastic back on and we'll do a test drive. All right, 
And I just put all the plastic back on. And uh, tighten down all the core support and the AC line bracket. So uh, the code cleared. We're going to try to go for a test drive now, make sure it's going to good. All right, let's go for a test drive and uh, get into it and make sure the, uh, the intake runner is actually flipping over when we get it. Let me get some high RPMs here. Okay, so we just went for the test drive and uh, the car runs great. It runs better than it ever has before. So I think that knock sensor fix and then also getting this vacuum line back on so the, uh, the intake runner can actually flip over. Uh, did the trick, engine light, all the lights were cleared. Uh, the P1077 for the uh, intake runner malfunction cleared and it did not come back. So pretty sure we got that one fixed. And as soon as I took the intake off, I knew that that vacuum hose probably got disconnected when I was taking the intake off to put the knock sensor in. So sometimes we step on ourselves and I actually created more work for myself, but at least hopefully you get some idea about how to test out the vacuum the solenoid and also check your intake runner make sure it's not gummed up or cracked if you're having that p1077 on your uh, honda or acura this is a 2002 through 2006 model so hope you enjoyed the content if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe to your channel if you haven't already and until next time skill up and ride then up and go and bay what you think Everybody needs a plan B. That's Even right. I was yesterday plan B. That's it. Cha cha for now.